Smart telescopes offer a simplified approach to astrophotography, but for the best results, the images must be processed in PixInsight. In this series of videos, we're going to look at a few examples of images captured with a C-Star S50. The first example is the southern part of the North America Nebula. To photograph the nebula, we created an observation plan that lasted the whole night. This image is made up of over 200 frames, each with an exposure time of 20 seconds. The sea star was set to equatorial mode. The images were taken using the telescope's light pollution filter under Bortle 3 skies. When you use a plan, the sea star stacks the images but also saves all the subframes. We can use these to generate our master in PixInsight. We'll do this using the best tool for this type of dataset, FBPP. To process the C-Star S50 images on the computer, first we need to connect the telescope to the computer and copy the files onto our disk. Once we've connected the C-Star, we'll find the images in the My Works folder. Here, there are two folders. In the first, NGC7000, we have the master generated by the C-Star and the processed image based on that master. We're going to pre-process the same set of images to create another, higher quality master. The subframes are saved in another folder with the name of the object and the suffix underscore sub. Here are the subframes in FITS format, as well as a JPEG version and thumbnail of each one. We're going to copy the FITS files. We can find FBPP in the Scripts category in the Batch Processing subcategory. FBPP has been designed to work with a large number of images, which is what we usually get when we use smart telescopes. To work with the C-Star data, all we need to do is add the lights. The easiest way to do this is to use one of these two buttons. With the Directory button, we simply select the directory containing the images, and FBPP adds and categorizes them automatically. Alternatively, we can click on the Files button, and then we have to select the frames. The C-Star automatically calibrates the subframes by subtracting the master dark and dividing by the master flat, so all we need to do is align the images and integrate them. Here we have four frames with an exposure time of 30 seconds and 276 with an exposure time of 20 seconds. We're going to remove the 30-second ones. To do this, we go to the Lights tab, select the frames, and remove them by clicking this button. It doesn't matter in this case, but FBPP warns us that we're not using a calibration image. Now we go to the Post Calibration tab and enable Drizzle Configuration. Drizzle Configuration slows down the process somewhat, but PixInsight's optimized Drizzle algorithm is designed to be faster than most. We always recommend enabling drizzle because, with color cameras, the Bayer pattern can introduce artifacts that subsequently impact photometry and color calibration. An image processed with drizzle will always be much cleaner and free of artifacts. We can see the drizzle is enabled here on the right. Once we've selected the frames and enabled drizzle, all that remains is to select the output directory, which we'll call FBPP. It's a good idea to check the diagnostic messages before running the process. In this case, all they tell us is that we haven't included any calibration images, but everything is fine and we have enough disk space. We're going to save the configuration in an icon and click Run.
In this example, the alignment and registration of 65 images has failed. FBPP always applies an additional quality filter. If an image cannot be aligned, it's because we really don't want it in the integrated image. The C-Star also rejects the bad subframes. However, if we analyze the dataset the C-Star used for the integration, we'll see that many of the subframes are of poor quality, and it's best not to include them. If we load all the frames in Blink, we can see which ones the C-Star has integrated. Now we click on Play to see the image sequence. Here, for example, there are some frames that shouldn't have been integrated. Their signal is very low because of passing clouds. Some have very elongated stars. All of these frames have been included in the master generated by the telescope, decreasing the signal-to-noise ratio. FBPP has rejected them, giving us a cleaner image with fewer frames. Execution of the script took less than two minutes. Now we can exit FBPP and open the master. Now that we've finished the pre-processing, we're going to open and process the master we generated with FBPP. Here on the left, we have the master generated by the C-Star, so we can compare that telescope-generated result with what we can get with PixInsight. To open our master, we go to the FBPP folder, select the Master folder, and open the master with Drizzle and without AutoCrop. By opening the master without AutoCrop, the image will have the same dimensions as the C-Star image, so the two will be aligned. We close the Drizzle weight map and press Ctrl-A to view the linear image with the help of STF. The image is completely green, but we can solve this by changing just one STF setting. As usual, before calibrating the color, we need to unlink the RGB channels and reapply the auto stretch. The first thing we can see is that the outlier rejection in the C-Star Master isn't very good. We've been left with a large trail across the image, and there are also persistent hot pixels like these ones here, or these ones here. We also notice that the FBPP master is much cleaner because it doesn't have any artifacts. The outlier rejection is perfect. And if we look at the background, FBPP gives us an image with much less noise. This is very noticeable in the dark structures. And also in these dark structures at the bottom of the image. The image is much smoother overall. Because FBPP uses drizzle, the stars are much smaller. We can demonstrate this using the FWHM eccentricity script, which analyzes the width and eccentricity of the stars. Here are the maps of the two images that the script generates, divided into color channels. In the bottom row, we have the star width maps in the three color channels in the image generated by the C-Star. And in the top row, the same measurements in the FBPP image. In all three channels, the FBPP values are much lower. For example, the minimum value in the green channel of the C-Star Master is 2.9 pixels, but in the FBPP map, the maximum in the center is 2.6. We only get 2.9 up here in this corner. The differences are even greater in the channels most affected by the Bayer pattern, that is, the red and the blue. The red channel values in the C-Star Master range from 3.35 to 3.65, so even the minimum value is higher than the maximum value of 3.3 found in the FBPP Master, where the lowest value is 2.8. This difference is even more marked in the blue channel. Here, the minimum value in the C-Star Master is 3.2, much higher than the FBPP maximum of 2.8 in this corner. The minimum FPPP values are 2.5 to 2.6 in the center. So, 
If we want to take advantage of the image quality provided by the C-Star and its camera, it is best to pre-process the images using the PixInsight tool designed specifically for this telescope type, that is, FBPP. Thank you.